All right, Nike and Apple among the big names closing retail locations in the United States. Courtney Reagan joins us. She's got more on this front right now. And Courtney, you think this is just a precursor of what's to come? I really do, Becky. I feel like pretty soon we won't need these lists and we're just going to say everybody's closed. They're going to continue to change these lists, but at least this is what we have now when we're living in this new normal in a country where officials are asking us to limit our gatherings, we're encouraging social distance, distancing, imposing curfews, closing bars and restaurants. So among the retailers that we know right now are closed, mostly here for about two weeks, include names like Apple, Nike that you mentioned, but also Under Armour, Lululemon, Columbia, Patagonia, Abercrombie & Fitch, and Urban Outfitters, plus a number of smaller names like Warby Parker, Everlane, Albers, Glossier, Away. And again, that's not a completely exhaustive list. The good news is for most of these store employees, they will continue to be paid while the stores are closed. Others are shortening hours. Now, these are mainly grocery stores, which makes sense. They have to have time to be able to restock their shelves and clean their stores. So these names with shortened hours include Walmart and its neighborhood markets and Sam's Club locations, Publix, Stop and Shop, Natural Grocers, Wegmans, Trader Joe's, and some Kroger stores. Gap, Old Navy, Banner, Banana Republic, those are also operating under reduced hours. B. Riley FBR analyst Susan Anderson estimates that annual earnings will fall an average of 18 percent for the specialty retailers in her coverage as a result of these closures. Piper, Zan Piper Sandler analyst Aaron Murphy estimates Nike and Lululemon's annual earnings will fall 2 percent and 3 percent respectively. So that's holding up a little better from the closures, while Under Armour's earnings could take a 16 percent hit. But the big retail lobby groups, the National Retail Federation and the Retail Industry Leaders Association, are telling consumers, quote, retailers, particularly grocery providers, are working with manufacturers, suppliers, and government agencies to make certain essential products and services remain readily available to customers. The groups are also urging customers not to hoard, saying, quote, hoarding products only contributes to the fear surrounding the virus and any hoarder acting with malicious intent to drive up prices on a secondary market should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And that is largely, of course, referring to folks that are buying large quantities of things that they are not using personally and then trying to resell secondhand for higher prices. You saw that story on the front of the New York Times over the weekend about the guy and his brother who had gone around and bought up Purell all yeah. over the place and, and, and then Amazon and eBay kind of pulled it so they're not allowed to sell it anymore. Now they've got $17,000 or more of Purell sitting around they can't get rid of? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's part of the reason why these lobby groups put out these statements because this sort of fear hoarding sort of begets more of it. It becomes right. a psychological problem. And so when people see others buying it, whether they want to use it for themselves and hoard it or it's something a bit more, should we say, malicious, like what you're talking about, it just sort of makes the situation worse. And as we were talking about last hour, all the retailers are working really closely with the supply chains, but also with the government to make sure that all the essentials will be there for us. Yes, we're seeing empty shelves, but that's because people are buying it much more than they normally are. And stores are, are truly restocking overnight and every day as much as they possibly can. Courtney, though, before you go, and I know it's something we were talking about last hour as well, as you go down the supply chain, meaning not just the people that are working in retail, and yep. I've been speaking with CEOs all weekend, and one of their real concerns without panicking people is that two and three weeks from now, getting employees to a factory, for example, getting right. an employee to a warehouse, getting an employee may actually become more complicated. Right, exactly. And so we've we've been watching what's happening in China to see how to how that country sort of rescaled up the workers that are going into the manufacturing or the distribution center and to see what's happening because of course we know that they are I guess you could say ahead of us with what's going on in the virus outbreak. And so we know that the factors came back online maybe 25 percent at first, maybe 50 percent at first as employees were getting healthy again. But to your point, Andrew, the social distancing. And I'm afraid this is just a new normal. That is a legitimate fear. And I think we all have to watch it very closely. And that just sort of goes even more to the fact that let's not try to buy and hoard more than what we actually need so that there is enough for everyone so that there won't be a problem because like you're suggesting maybe they won't be able to get the normal supply that they would typically get because down the line it's not being manufactured at those same quantities.